Tim, I'm so glad to have you on the show today and yep. get everyone on Product Launch Hazards to get to know you. Great to be here. Great to, uh, to finally get, the, get going. I know we've been planning this a really long time because we have so many people that, I mean, we, you and I agree on this. We have so many people that we wish we could help. There's just not enough hours in the day to talk to them all. Yeah, well, there's definitely not enough hours in the day just to get everything done, let alone talk to everybody that needs, uh, that needs help and wants help and uh, is looking for some expertise for sure. Yeah, and so that's really what we're here for. We're here to try to find a broader audience that we can reach out and that they can get some help when they need it. They can help themselves and really get to know which experts really make sense for where they are and what stage they're in. And, and that's, I think, a big evaluation is like, I'm sure that you get this all the time because you are, a, I'm call, I call you the on the shelf expert, like every time <laughs> I talk to people, which is the right. name of your podcast. But it is also actually what you are. You are an absolute expert at what will work in mass market retail, how to sell into mass market retail, how to get on the shelf just about anywhere. And when we look at that, there's a point at which most people are like, am I ready yet? And, or I think I'm ready and they may not be. I'm sure that is like the number one question you get. Yeah, I think the number one question, and if I'm not mistaken, my next one of these is actually going to dive into this. Uh, but it's how long does it take? That's probably <laughs> that, the, that's, number, the number one question I get. Uh, I think that entrepreneurs or people that are trying to get their products on the shelf or have just created a product, they don't struggle through the questions of, am I ready? They need actually somebody else to tell them, you're not ready or <laughs> you are ready uh, because they always think they're ready. Uh, you know, they've gone through this process of birthing a product and now they're just like, man, every the carpets are going to roll out and everybody's going to love it. Um, I think yeah. the one thing that they struggle with or wonder the most, and it's the very first podcast I ever did. And whenever I go back and listen to it, I'm like, oof, that's a little rough, you know, because I didn't know what I was doing at all. But it's still one of my top five podcasts listened to every month. And that is how long is it actually going to take? So we're going to get super into that uh, on my next um, yeah. Well, good. And I'm so glad. And you know what that is, it's, 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 you know, it, it does need a, maybe, and it's time for that to be discussing it a little bit of updating because people think that the speed has changed because the speed of commerce has changed, <laughs> but the speed of retail really hasn't. And you and I know that from the inside out. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that it's still, um, it, it's still pretty, pretty consistent, you know, unless you're George Clooney trying to launch a new item uh, or a huge celebrity. I think that for those of us that work in the real trenches of retail, we know that it's going to take a certain amount of time. Buyers are a little bit more burdened now than they've ever been. And so, uh, so things don't get quicker. They get, they get more, I think, backed up. And so it, it, uh, it requires yeah. us to be more prepared, really understand what the buyers are wanting from us so that we can have that stuff ready and kind of, you know, what I do is kind of help people take all the little roadblocks out that could get them put down under the pile. I call it always under the pile because when you're talking to a buyer, you're on the top of the stack. If you have a hurdle that you can't overcome right then, buyer's going to put you on the bottom of the stack and then they're going to go on to the you next. Got to work person. your way back up again. <laughs> got to work your way back up. And so what we do is we try to minimize the hurdles, you know, and take out all those little things that are going to get you put on the bottom of the stack so that you're more ready when, when you're actually having those conversations. So, so let's set that up because what I just referred to was that you are an insider. You've been doing this a long time, just like I have, and you've got a lot of inside data and inside information. And that's really what this, the, there's so many landmines. There's so many hurdles. There's so many hazards. <laughs> the other kind of hazards. No pun right? intended. Yes. Yeah, pun actually intended there. Oh, but, okay. Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, it's, you know, there's so many of those things and that's why you're invited on this platform. That's why you are, you were my first expert that I reached out to because there are so many of these things that we know. So let's dial back in and let everybody get to know you and talk about how you got started in selling to mass market retail and how you got started in this industry. Well, I guess depending on how far you want to go back, I mean, you know, the beginning of my career actually was in retail. So I worked at the executive level of companies like Toys R Us and Bed Bath and & Beyond and uh, Barnes and Noble and Office Depot. And so, uh, you know, I really learned firsthand back in the 
back years ago when it was where a store manager or above really had a lot of control over their own building and how you merchandise products and how you really taught people how to buy certain things. And so uh, I'm also an expert in merchandising and how to get people to buy and, and where you play stuff and how you build a palette and how you build an end cap and why all this stuff is important. And then I moved um, from that and there's some little things in the middle, but I moved from that into wholesale because I really wanted to learn and have a well-rounded business. So I really wanted to learn, you know, where do the products come from? How do you get them over here? How do they get built? And then how do they actually get sold to retail? So I did that for, um, you know, several years and really the way TLB consulting was, uh, created was I got, I got fired, um, <laughs> you know, along with, about the, and it happened so often. Yeah. About, you know, I think at the time it was around myself with around 200,000 other people in 2009, uh, I was working for a large robotic massage share company and I got laid off along with all the, the other executives. And so, um, it was, you know, a couple days after I had just built a business for uh, this company with Costco from 2 million to like 16 million in just two years. And, uh, and, and so I wanted, I know I wanted to do something and have people and help people with how that actually gets done and um, how you can actually work with Costco. So I created this, uh, actually, I, I created the company, but uh, I, I hooked up with a buyer from Costco who was having trouble with a couple vendors. You know, they don't have time to teach them this or teach them that. And they asked me, hey, would you just work with these guys? And here I am two days out of, uh, uh, of getting laid off. So I'm like, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And I didn't yeah. realize that how much our, our how much our careers kind of overlap there because it was at it was right about 2009 that we started our current formation of the business and it started in office seating for Costco right at that moment. Right. Yeah. So how how odd I had no idea. Yeah, we probably were passing each other in the hall. <laughs> That's right. right? Exactly. Um, you know, and so both of these companies uh, got in to Costco, but then neither one of them made it past testing, which is typical. I mean, it can be common, common. Um, but they both learned a lot. And, uh, and it dawned on me that, Hey, uh, nobody's really at the time, 2009, nobody was really teaching people how to do business with Costco. Uh, and so I, I read some articles and built a business around that. And what I soon found out was that most of the people that were coming to me, uh, weren't ready to go to Costco. And so instead of just discarding them, we started building different, uh, services that, uh, like total sales solution, which we're at now is our biggest, uh, service bar none, which is where we act as if, uh, we're an outsourced VP of sales. And we really build a strategy and help these small and medium sized companies take their products to all the major retailers that, uh, make sense for their I brand. I call that embedded services. And there you go. Like, I, off that, that old style journalism of being an embed journalist, right? Where you're right in there in the trenches with them. And, um, and that's, uh, you know, I find that that is my, that has always been my biggest, my biggest item that, that people want. That is the most in demand. And it's also the one that though requires so much of my time that I'm very picky and do the least of, or take the least clients in because of it. It's hard because not everybody's going to be, you know, we at the, so backing up a minute. So, so we started doing that and, and that instantly became a huge part of what we did. Of course, we still did Costco work and consulting and, um, but uh, it became evident, you know, that uh, at the time that, that even though we thought some products were just out of the park home runs, they just timing might not be right. And, and so not everybody gets in. And uh, so uh, we were, so I started turning away a bunch of people because I just knew that there's there, that product would struggle or might not be right. Or, and then um, uh, it, it, it dawned on me that I did, feel I did a little bad, what? didn't it? Like this is, a, that was my thing too. It was like, every time I turned them away, I would be like, oh, God, I hope they're okay out there. And they, I would worry right? about it. Yeah. yeah. Like all, so what we did is we created an evaluation program. And uh, um, we created our own scale and we have eight things that we look at and uh, it allowed me to take everybody. So, uh, so we didn't have to turn away anybody, no matter whether you just made a, a, a you know, a, a carve something out of a, an idea out of a piece of wood, we can still evaluate it and tell you in the end how it's scoring right now based on the whole big picture uh, and what you need to do to really get there. And so it allowed us to stop saying no and we could say yes to everybody. And, and I tell you what, the people that go through the evaluation, 
are the happiest people because, you know, everybody wants a roadmap, you know, what do yeah. we need to do next? And, uh, and that's kind of what it created for them. So that's what we've been doing. Uh, we could, I started the podcast in October of 2015 as a way, I don't know, you know, just as a way to give away more information and help people that just wanted to do it. It's really a DIY do it yourself. Um, and you know, you always have those people that are saying, Oh, you're giving away too much information or, you know, you're giving it away for free. And, and I'm like, yeah, I am doing that. And, uh, because the percentage that do something with it, that really take action, that really follow the advice and that when, and that when they don't know, they do reach out to the right experts at that time. Those are the ones that succeed. And if you get one or 2%, that's awesome because you've just put a great successful product onto the market. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. And even if somebody just followed all the steps and did it on their own, my very first article, um, and I don't know whether Ezine articles like wipes away your, your, um, your views and then starts it over. They did that for mine, but um, based on where it's at now and where it was, has been viewed almost 100,000 times. That used to be the number one referrer of business. And I wrote that back in 2009. It was one of the very first, and it was the 11 steps to getting your product into Costco or something like that. And uh, it's still a huge refer. And and again, it's giving people the right answers. And, uh, and uh, what I have found is people are doing their research, right? Yeah. And they don't always want to call you because they think you're taking your time or you might charge them just to ask you a simple question. And so the podcast is a way that people that have this dream that are just starting their research can start to really understand what it's like. And hopefully, man, just avoid some of these huge pitfalls that drain money, um, you know, drain the, drain the accounts when people make a mistake here, a mistake there. Yeah, you know that that's something that we've had we've had a you know few conversations over over the years is that yeah. you know it it breaks my heart to see some of the amount of money that gets drained doing just the wrong things in the wrong order and the wrong resources a lot of times too and sure. it just that drives me crazy like I want to circumvent that and just say hey here's the map right the road map here's the map do them in this order because it really makes a difference and you'll spend less money you'll get there faster. Yeah, you know, you can't skip ahead because there'll be all these steps you didn't do and you'll fail and you'll have to go back to the beginning again. And so, yeah, that, that's really, I feel so strongly that, you know, all the prep that you provide, all the, um, the free stuff, <laughs> the, the, the podcast, I mean, that's what has made you very, very valuable to your clients, to your listeners, and you're going to be so valuable here to, on the platform as well. And so I encourage people to really make sure you do not miss Tim's office hour because it is always got golden nuggets in there. It's always got things that are going to save you money, make a difference in whether or not you can make it because some mistakes are fatal in retail. You don't get a second chance all the time. Yeah, some of all, some, for sure, you know, with certain buyers, you know, once they say they're going to pass, I mean, uh, you got to wait until somebody else has that seat. And uh, so, you know, take the time to do it right. And the fun thing about this uh, office hours is I don't do a lot of live things. Um, no, you don't. That's true. You're so busy. <laughs> um, so, well, I don't know if it's just that, but I mean, I, I, you know, to set it all up and not have it just look super rinky dink or whatever. Um, <laughs> I, I don't do a lot of live things. And, and so um, this is a chance to, to uh, listen in live and, um, and, and interact live. And I think that um, that's going to be super valuable. I think that uh, sometimes you have questions in the moment that um, then uh, they lose steam later on when you're trying to, why did I ask? You? So I, I think uh, that, that that's going to be big, going to have big value. I'm super looking forward to interacting with people in a live setting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think this has one of been, been one of my favorite things about doing so many events that I do every year is that is that sort of when I get to do the live mentorships, when people sit at my table and have lunch with me or something like that, it's been one of my favorite things because the questions in the moment are much more relevant than we can do on our podcasts, than we can do um, in an article that we can do separately or 
it's just, you know, and it also, those questions help so many other people who are thinking the same things or in similar places. And that's really a fight because it's kind of a, it's a pretty, most of the questions we get are very common. Like they come up again and again, maybe in different orders or they get thought of differently. So asking questions and participating in this platform is going to be so powerful for everyone involved. So we really want to make sure that we, that you guys get, take advantage of that as much as possible. And, um, and picks Tim's brain. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about um, the retail landscape. Like, I mean, what is, why do people still need sales reps? It sounds like an odd thing, but um, I think that that's really a case that sales representation, that understanding how it works at the retailer is critically important. And it's something people think, oh, I can just do this. I can send an email. It doesn't work like that. And, and I talk a little bit about that because I think that that's, um, that's an, undetermined job description. Yeah. Well, I don't know whether people need um, sales reps um, or people to do things for them. Um, I think that's valuable. And, and, you know, even me, if somebody can get it done faster than I can myself, I'll hire somebody myself to do it. I think what's most important is to get advice um, or to have a mentor or to have a consultant, somebody that can help you look beyond what you're looking because I think that uh, buyers want to know things that you don't know that they want to know them. They want to know things from a different perspective. And then all of a sudden it gets personal because you created this product and how could they possibly say that or say this? Uh, And so you have to be ready for that. You have to be ready. What's that buyer meeting going to be like? You know, I've been in over a hundred buyer face-to-face buyer meetings worldwide. And so I'm not generally uh, surprised, although, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 podcasts back, I did do a podcast on a, a buyer meeting that just went totally wrong. And, uh, <laughs> I, I gonna, missed that one. I'm going to have to go back and listen you should, to Yeah, you should go back and listen to it. Because, and, and the reason I put it out there is because you know all I ever talk about is all the things that go right. And I think it's important for people to know that I can even walk into a buyer meeting and it can just go terribly wrong. And, I've had uh, one of those happen where you just, when you just don't know what's going on at the corporation and you walk in at the wrong time and there's obviously been some kind of mandate that hasn't been announced yet and you're, yeah, in your knock sideways go, Ooh, what just happened there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I won't get into that on, on, on here, but I mean, I think the retail landscape is more onerous on the supplier these days than it's ever been. The suppliers have to be smarter. They have to be more educated. They have to know what they're doing, what they're getting into. They have to understand the landscape. They have to understand their competitors because a lot of times the buyers, from no fault of their own, they don't know any of that. They're, they're, they're deep into the numbers. They're crunching numbers now. And so they look up and they see you sitting there and they need your help with you know, who are your main competitors and what's, you know, why are you even trying to get into this market and what, what are the uniques that your product has? And so it's, unfortunately, it's not that, I mean, I've been in this business long enough to remember when I used to go into a buyer meeting and it was like, oh man, look at that. That's awesome. Let's just, we're going to buy a couple of containers and just see how it does. Um, and you know, and they were just cowboys, you know, let's just take it and, and see how it does. That's just not the way it is anymore. And so Oh, there's so much hierarchy justification. Floor space is so valuable. Um, the pressure to make sure that it's going to turn before you put it on the floor. I mean, there's just like countless things that they have to to take a look at. And then there's the dichotomy of online and in store. Well, interestingly enough, um, so there's good news. You know, I don't always want to paint a, a doomsday because <laughs> yeah. the good news is is that you can be that educated you can be that standout supplier that knows what they're doing and knows how to get it done and has the information that the buyer wants and you're gonna when you're that way you're gonna stand out and your product's gonna stand out and uh you know people think that retail is dying because we lost you know seven thousand retail doors last year and toys r us i'm just about to do a um a, uh, a, a podcast called Goodbye Toys R Us because everything I learned about merchandising, uh, everything I learned working for Toys R Us. And so it's <laughs> bad for me. But this podcast is only going to be filled with anecdotes from working there and the crazy stuff that would happen. Uh, so <laughs> it's going to be kind of fun. 
Um, but, uh, you know, people think that the retail is dying, but it's not. The biggest demographic in the U.S., the millennials, they actually want to go to stores and touch stuff and have people help them. And so here's the little unpaid nugget before we even get this whole thing rolling is figure out what your customer experience is with your product. You know, whether the customer experience is there in the store while they're holding it, or maybe it's when they unwrap it or unbox it at home. But if that experience is exceptional, then the retailer looks good, you look good, and everybody wins. If for some reason that experience is poor, the retailer loses and you lose. And so before you even get there, uh, I think it's important to, th to think about what, what is the experience I want my customers to have when they see it, look at it, open it, play with it, use it. Um, it that's yeah. the most important and, thing right now. And we have to say a, a, a unassisted, self-explanatory experience, no matter how badly you want to you know, sell your product and you're there and you're the champion for it. When it's on the retail shelf, it has to sell itself and people have to be become self-aware about it. They have to like, you know, experience it for themselves. And if That's they don't get it, they, if they don't get it, then, then you did something wrong, whether or not you, you know, it's, it's not about uh, the product itself. It's about the communication of that product. And it's not just messaging or boxing. It's the whole, you using it. If it's not explanatory, self-explanatory at the same time, you failed in the mass market retail process. That's just how it is. And so I always say it's very, very different. Um, from a design standpoint, from a sales standpoint as well, putting something online has a different proposition than it does on the shelf. And that's really why understanding the differences and understanding that your product may need um, a repositioning, redesign, reboxing, reuser experience, as you put it, right? It, it needs, it, just because it's great online doesn't mean it's going to be great in a store. And so that's also a difference that I want people to be aware of and, and you'll be able to bring to them because you do lots of evaluations. So you have lots of ways to describe why that's not working there. Yeah. I mean, I always tell people, Hey, listen, if you have to explain your product to a friend twice, then you're never going to explain it to a consumer. Um, if you can't just tell somebody that, you know, intimately one time and have them get it, uh, then, then nobody's going to get it. And I have people that try to explain stuff to me six ways from Sunday and, uh, and I'm like, listen, man, if I'm still not getting it, then the chances that somebody's going to get it on a retail shelf is, is, is slim. So we got to work on that. We got to work on the, the who, why, and why, you know, the whole problem. But like I said, that's your part, you know, yeah, yeah, what, but they go hand in hand. In. Yeah. But they really go hand in hand because if, if you've gotten through and worked through the um, user experience and what it needs to be and what that store is expecting and where that store is, because the store has a, I mean, they got to exist, right? And so they have their position. Uh, otherwise they go, you know, the way of Toys R Us. So they, ha you know, they have to have, uh, they have to have their own mission, their own differentiator, the own thing that is driving in those millennials and those baby boomers that are retired and whoever it might be, that is their focus. You know, they have to understand that too. And when they don't, that's when trouble happens because that yeah, it gets a hard time to get explained through to the product. That's at the beginning, right? So yeah, I mean, it, it's really a, a lack of clarity in that process it just starts to degrade the whole success wheel itself. So I yeah, love so working together. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're going to have some fun. Um, I think, you know, diving into every aspect from your product's inception to, um, how to prepare it to, uh, you know, your first email to a buyer and what you should and shouldn't say to, you know, just setting up the room. Uh, this is a big deal, you know, getting to a, a meeting early and setting up the room for your own advantage. Um, you know, a lot of times people don't even think about that. Where's the buyer going to sit? Where's the buyer's assistant going to sit? What do you want them looking at? What do you want in front of them? Where do you want you know, never, you know, know, me, I always want to be between them and the door. So they have to go <laughs> buy me to get out if they, if they want to run for That's the hill. so good. I love it. Um, so, I mean, but those are all positional things that most people don't think of. And, um, you know, what to do if you freeze. Um, you know, I went to a meeting with a guy who said, opened his mouth and nothing came out. Nothing came out of his oh. mouth for the whole meeting. Um, and that's the whole reason he hired me just in case that happened. And uh, luckily, yeah, we were there. It was a Costco meeting, but, uh, but yeah, but I mean, it happened. You go and nothing's uh, coming out because this is your very first time. And so, you know, what to do if, if that happens, you don't have me there. 
Um, so uh, we're also going to talk about sales and selling and uh, sales techniques. And because, you know, if you're going to get yourself in front of a buyer, uh, you're actually selling. I know it doesn't seem like that, but you are actually selling something. If you're writing an email that you want somebody to do anything, click on this, click on that, you're selling. And so we're going to talk Invite about that. Invite me to a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, that is so, so true. And, and, you know, the other thing that I think that is that you touched on early on is that when you have an opportunity to be in front of a retail buyer, you have to make sure everything's in order because you want to maximize that opportunity because you may not get a second one ever. And, um, and that doesn't matter how big you are. It happens to big brands that they don't get a second chance. So small brands, they don't even know you. To, yeah, I think it happens to everybody. And I think even big brands are more um, susceptible because they think that they're, they take a certain part of the meeting for, to, for advantage, you know, thinking that, hey, I don't have to do this or I don't have to do that because I'm me. Uh, um, yeah. But you do. And uh, there's, um, you only get, a, a you know, the meeting will start out as a 15 minute meeting. When it goes 30 minutes, you're doing great. If it goes close to an hour, you knock it out of the park. But every minute starts out that it could be over in 15 minutes, so. Right, exactly. So you better maximize every minute you have right. and so that you can get that next minute. So yeah, so I think this is gonna be, you are gonna be one of our most um, uh, commanded, <laughs> in, in demand uh, experts here because, uh, because I think that there isn't a part of the process and that's the case. There's some of our experts who really, it's like, unless you're ready to patent, do you, you know, do you really have questions for a patent attorney, right? Or unless you're questioning that. Um, but, you know, there is so many places along the way and that's one of the real key things we wanted to provide here at Product Launch Hazards is access to someone so that you know when the right time is to bring them in for a consult, when you know the right time is, you know, to do that but maybe you just have a little question. And so having access to that means you won't make a critical error that makes it harder later for, for Tim to help you, for him to consult with you, for, for these things to happen when in the right timing, just because you asked us a little question and you got, you kept on the right path. And yeah, so I mean, that's uh, conti you know, continuity is going to be so important. Well, being in, in this uh, platform, I think says, that I want to be proactive, not reactive. And I get once a month, and it's been for a lot of years that I get these people calling me that are losing money in retail. And uh, everything looked fine. And, you know, but there was all these hidden costs that they didn't know about. And they signed this contract. And I um, mean, that's where you get a lot of people saying, well, you know, big retail is screwing me. And uh, I'll always ask them, well, who's the last person that signed the contract? That would be you. Uh, <laughs> And so, uh, you know, I'm so glad that you're doing this because this is going to give people the opportunity to figure out um, all those things that come before you sign the contract and all those things, how you can really help yourself and not be one of those people that calls up later and says, hey, I'm losing money. My sales are great, but I'm losing money. How do I fix that? And, you know, that's a hard question. That is a hard question. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very sure that you and I at some point will do one together um we'll, we'll probably do a few together because we just it'll just happen at some point but pricing that's one we definitely both need to do together at some point because it's part designed in and part planned in because you have to have lots of margins and stuff built in because that's where where it goes terribly wrong later when you find out you're losing money and so we definitely should do that together because it's on you got two sides of that coin on there yeah it's it's huge but i guess i mean i was I, you know in the totality of this whole platform is uh the, i guess the benefits to the people that are going to be here are going to be that insider line that insider track and um you might be you might just find me on the internet and <laughs> say, and start listening to my podcast and you'll have this one track of information um but being here allows you to be in one place and get like this, I don't know, multitude of different tracks of insider information, probably more stuff that any one person will ever really want to, to, to know, but it'll all become relevant. You know, uh, sometimes I don't even think people are listening, but just last year I had a guy that I hadn't talked to in a year called me up saying, hey, and he had written down all the stuff that I had told him. And then I never heard from him for a whole year. And he had been a year working on all the things that I said. And now he was come back and he's all ready to go. 
Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, let's do it, man. Um, yeah. I love that. Well, you know, I, I had a, I had a meeting, I had a, a little coffee with tea actually with this um, young woman who's doing a wonderful, um, uh, I'm going to call it a baby product brand. And, um, it's fantastic. And I was so impressed with her process and her, the way she absorbed information, the way she researched. And so she sent me a follow-up email and said, I just want to recap that this is my order of things that I'm going to, I should, I should attack and work on. And she sent it to me within 24 hours of our tea. And I was like, wow. And not only that, but I just saw, I saw, Oh, you know what? You missed a sub step here Add this. And it was, you know, just one tiny little tweak, but it'll make the difference between her spinning her wheels for a few months or being successful and, and phoning through. And it was simply because she reached out to me and sent a follow-up thank you email. And I was like more than willing to look through it and do that. But when I was looking at it, I was like, God, I hate to be that salesy person, but like, ooh, I have a person for this one and I have a person for this one. And oh, they're all on the platform and you can ask them questions every single month. <laughs> and so I was like, hmm. I really have to do a better job of being pushier about my sales <laughs> because, because the value is so here and, and you are a critical part of that um, in, and who can touch on so many different aspects of the overall process. And you have a bigger view of it like I do. You have this broader view of where all these things fit together. And it really is hard to see that when you're launching your first product and maybe even your sixth product. But when you've launched your 250, I don't even know what your number is, but... <laughs> It's probably way up there as to how many you've worked through and getting getting through launch. What is your what is your number today? Do you Ooh, know? I, no, I don't even uh, because I mean we, we do so many different we do so many different things. Whether we're just you know sometimes people are hire us just to listen in on a buyer meeting and then explain it to them after. Uh, so you might or, have touched on thousands of products. And right, then, right, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to weird. put a number I, against. I've never that. really thought about what my number is. Yeah. Uh, well, somebody made me quantify it for early on. And oh. I was like, I, and so early on and when we were starting to market our business for the first time in, in, you know, back in 2009, we, you know, we, we didn't do that. Everything was just referral. But once, um, once I started reaching out and doing speeches, people were like, well, how many products have you touched? It was like a very common thing. And so yeah. when I went to quantify it, I was like, it doesn't sound like a real number. Like it sounds too high, but you don't, it's the same thing as you. You don't understand when you touch the aspects of that, what impact that has overall on it. Everything, like I said, everything is this big ecosystem. And, uh, yeah. and so hopefully pro, uh, project, uh, Product launch hazards. <laughs> Product launch yeah, hazards. That sounds bad of me not to get tongue tied on that, but um, <laughs> I do I, it all the time. It's my you know, name. Hopefully, it will be this um, this big ecosystem that uh, you know you can't um, that doesn't survive unless you really listen to everybody's information. And if you're going to take the time to be part of it, it would be a shame if you didn't take advantage of every single aspect that's in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to seeing how active some of our members are and, and how, how much they participate and how much they get out of it, because I really think that we're going to find a much faster success path because of their activity level and their interaction with all of you. So I am so glad you are on this platform, Tim. And I look forward to personally listening to many, many of yours as well, office hours and sitting in if I can, because I always learn something when we do a podcast together, when we interact together. And, um, and we also, it's just, uh, you know, good to have a broader, for me, a broader experience to making sure that, hey, I could, you know, I could design that better because Tim says this is important. And so I, it's a learning experience for me as well. Well. Wow. I'm excited about it. And uh, I think that um, I'm excited to interact with all the different people that are trying to, you know, do something that I have a huge passion for. And uh, it's not, um, you know, doing podcasts and talking to people and answering questions. It's not a lot, not really like work for me. Um, as you know, I like to talk and have people listen to me. So, <laughs> well, I also just want to make it before we go, um, and just make sure that everybody realizes that you have a very, very broad range of category experience as well. So I always joke, I always joke that I don't really do food or fashion. Um, I do fashion accessories, but not fashion because the seasonality of it is too fast. Um, and the margins are too low, but the, um, and food is just not my experience, but you have a lot of food experience. So is there any categories that you don't, you don't play in? I don't think so. Um, I'm not big or let's say I, I don't play a lot in apparel, um, but it doesn't probably mean for the same reasons. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean that I can't, um, I probably don't take on apparel to sell it myself, but uh, I certainly can. 
advise on it? Because these days, um, my business is all about business model. It's not about having an in with this buyer and in with that buyer because those buyers change in, in a heartbeat. It's about understanding different retailers, business models and how to actually take your product and kind of fit it inside that or see if it will. Yeah. Um, but uh, we've, I mean, we've sold everything from uh, earthworms to robotic massage chairs to um, geez, what's something, what's like an outlier that we're even, um, You've had a couple unusual like food stuff, haven't you? Oh, jalapenos. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, really, really good jalapenos and uh, salsa. And uh, we're doing some baby products now. And so luckily for us, that's the fun thing. My daughter thinks I have the coolest job in the world because it's like free stuff. Just samples just keep coming. <laughs> Shows up here. <laughs> but if you were just an infant, you know, you could be playing around on that baby mat right there. But uh but you're not, so you can't. So we have to find somebody who has a baby. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> well, you know, that's funny because my daughters are always uh, stealing the supplies too. So I yeah, know exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the whole sample closet is, um, but uh, it all goes, it all good, goes to good use. You know, we get some baby products and it turns out that somebody in our sphere of influence just had a baby. So, uh, um, you know, they get to try out the product and give me feedback or, or ever, however it, uh, however it goes. I have, um, well, we won't talk about that on here, but <laughs> just that you just sent me somebody. I did. That, uh, yeah, that's sending me some samples. So uh, I'm anxious to try those and see how that works. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is exactly how we got, want you guys to work. We want you guys to just, you know, question him, ask him lots of things about his background. If you want to know about categories of products, you know, each category has its own nuances and that's why business model is important. Some retailers are better than others. And, and so these things matter and that's why it's, you know, this opportunity is so golden for you because the podcast, you can't cover every category. You can't cover those nuanced questions. And so when someone can go in and say, hey, what's the deal with juvenile products? Oh, well, they have a longer screening time, for instance, you know, because their safety is important. So you, you had, you know, there's more caution there. So how do you handle Product that? liability insurance. Yeah, you know, way up yeah here. exactly. So how do you handle that? And what are all these nuances? And that's where you can dial in to really get something, you know, personal and, and get your path more defined by utilizing these office hours. So, so please join us for Tim's next office hour, which is, is um, going to be, yeah. Huh? I'm saying, join me. Join you. Oh, that's right. Join yeah. you. Join yeah. me for the next office hour. Yeah, for the next office hour. And so, and make sure to, you know, go right into the site. And if you're joining this and you're started with this video, and there's many more since then, you can also find all of Tim's videos, all of all of the office hours that he's done in his profile. There's a tab um, and it will have all of the videos in one place. So you can binge Watch and listen. Binge, <laughs> watch. That's Binge right. watch Tim Bush. That That's just right. sounds so exciting. There you go. And, and of course, you can contact Tim directly. He has his evaluation and all of those things. You can do that right through his profile. You can link through to his site and be able to do all of those things and connect with him directly. So please do that. And Product Launch Hazards members, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much for listening. And Tim, thank you for being an expert on our platform. It's my pleasure. I'm looking so forward to it.